Hello. Ride it, ride it, ride it. Oh, <laughs> grabba. Are we live? <laughs> we are live. Yes, we are live again. We are live. Nice to see you all, all again. Ah. Yeah, oh, I do. It's, uh, but we're getting into a frequency now, at least. We're, we're uh, not waiting a month. Yeah. So now, two weeks ago, I guess? Uh, yeah, it's approximately that. Yeah, perfectly. It's been a good two weeks, though. It's yeah. Been, yeah. Yeah. It Except, happens a lot, I think. Yeah, and you probably have something to tell us about the latest uh, and greatest, Matthias. <laughs> yeah, a new bike yeah. week. It's perfect. And uh, we, we can. And it's still snowing outside. So. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. could have yeah. been a better time. Yeah, we could actually. have actually made a whole episode just about that uh, bike and um, all the better bikes out there. But that can be a story for another time. But uh, I think we yeah. owe. Oh, you mean those boring bikes? You <laughs> mean? I think we owe our, um, <laughs> owe our uh, viewers a uh, proper uh, cheers. So. Um, oh. Oh. Th this takes a oh. few. Uh, ju it, this is not anything you do in a rush since it's Weizen, so yeah, I, I actually I'll, I'll start. I got uh, I think I made a shorts video where I drunk uh, Weiss beer from the bottle and I never got so much response from the Germans out there it was just crazy that was like uh, <laughs> yeah pissing on religion it was uh, sacrilege <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> I almost yeah, got great. that trash typically that you tra me tra that's true. While the foam settles here, so we have a topic today. Yes. Oh, oh, a topic. Yes. That's great. We, last time we spoke about the different luggage options, all the bags and panniers and stuff. And today it's all about what we put in them, right? Yeah. Yeah. And what we stuff into the bags. Yeah. And. Since, I mean, did you ever go on a ride, arrive at camp, and you didn't have a beer in, oh, yeah. in the oh, packing? Oh, yeah, actually. Actually. Okay. And that's I a actually pain. don't bring beer when I'm out riding, because it makes me have to go up in the night and piss so much. So I try to uh, drink or take whiskey instead. <laughs> what? Oh, that's crazy. I used to stop at the fuel stops and... Uh, and have a uh, two or three beers <laughs> yeah yeah okay let's start this episode i i can't wait for the foam to settle here so cheers guys cheers ladies cheers guys good to see you yeah and cheers to you out there mm. oh oh <laughs> that was oh. a good one that was a good one so what do you have in the glass? You have the Franciscana. Franciscana. Hefeweizen. And some. This is actually Lagavulin 16 years. So um, it's quite good to be uh, almost a little bit posh. Uh, I, I like that one. Oh. Love that one. You're the luxury yeah. guy. So I have to stick with the uh, piston head uh, haze log. Piston head. Yeah. Never heard about that. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. So how do we get the topic started? So gear, we have the bike, we have the luggage. Uh, let's say we're going on uh, a few nights camping trip. Let's, we're not talking about the Nomad Sweden style uh, luxury hotel one bag thing here now, right? <laughs> I think we could talk about both because... Uh, when we ride uh, on adventure, either you go B and B or or uh, motor camp. Yeah, I think uh, both of them are interesting. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, Different packing volumes and what to bring and so on. Yeah, yeah. So let's start out with the camping trip. And <clears throat> do you th think there is a difference if you're going for one night or one month? What what what's the difference? in packing well i don't think that's uh, no, with my packing for... it's uh, not that huge of a difference because i always bring my sleeping uh, equipment my tent or my hammock and my sleeping mm. bag and uh, my trangia that i use to cook with and um, i always bring uh, my uh, beloved uh, crocs and um, 
Yeah, I think the packing is same if I do one overnighter or I do a month on the trail. It doesn't matter. I just I need I always bring with me the same stuff and extra clothing and uh, just to be prepared for everything, because the packing on the yeah, bike is quite uh, similar. Yeah, I think uh, I do the same actually, even if it's just for a weekend or uh, or uh, a few weeks or so. Yeah, because I mean, there... you you you. you uh you sleep then you have that set then you uh you want to eat you have your cooking stuff and so on so i i mean for me if i'm going a longer time i may bring an extra pair of socks underwear and t-shirt perhaps yeah it's the clothing that uh, yeah. could differ yeah. in the climate or or per uh, how many days yeah yeah for sure. But I see that is so, quite, quite uh, I see a lot of people um, have bring the same stuff uh, in probably the most case in the same places. But uh, it's like you say, the clothing, the extra shoes, or if they need to go uh, hiking or if they're going to do visit museums and stuff, they like to change out of their motorcycles uh, clothes. So I think that is kind of the things that yeah. variates a little bit from um, a weekend trip or to a longer trip. And of course, if you're going down to a hotter climate, you can bring shorts and stuff that is much lighter to wear. Yeah, that's nice to have. I think even if you are going on a long trip, I, I don't think that you bring so many changes with clothes because it's uh, better to, to wash yeah. up than pack for a, for a week of clothes, so to speak. I, I usually maximum have like... Uh, three pair of socks and underwear and so on does uh, and and t-shirts a couple and so on yeah and i always bring yeah, so i always use wool so i try to wash them on the, on my on the go i i bring a uh, like this um yeah, dry, dry bag. bag is the name of it. So I try to wash my gear on on the way. I just put up a rigid line and then I hang it to dry um, whenever I can. So I don't bring more than three sets. One I br have on me, one in to spare, and one that I can have uh, kind of like dirty. So I always have three shifts that I fluctuate between. Yeah, so yeah. we go let's say we're going on a camping trip and let's forget about all the sleeping and cooking and stuff like that only clothes so you're riding and let's say you have all the riding gear you need for the rain and whatever besides the riding gear what are the things that you bring with you in clothes wise we already said okay we have some extra socks underwear and and sort of a base layer mm -hmm. stuff what else well, I, I bring with me a puffer jacket in the summertime. I bring my adventure spec. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure the name of it. The one that you used on the latest episode, because that is a little bit lighter, but still warm enough in uh, the cold evenings. But uh, in early and late season, I bring the big red puffer jacket because that keeps me warm in all scenarios. Mm. Yeah, it could differ. I, I... What I like when I'm out on these kind of trips is to to uh, have stuff with me to have dual use. Yeah, and that's good because it uh, saves some uh, volume in the packing. So one of the things I really like is this one. Uh, this is a loft jacket, but it also serves as a uh, a pillow. Yeah. So what, I use this in the hammock or it? even in the tent. What, what what kind of jacket is it? You said. Oh, it's a loft jacket. Loft. Yeah, I think it's a Prima loft is the name yeah. of it. Yeah, it's a very warm layer. Okay. So this is really nice to have uh, when you are on the um, on the campsite as well at the evenings. Yeah. Or on the bike as well if you are on colder climate and and you go up to the to to highlands and so on. It's a really nice extra layer. So it works pretty much that uh, I think your adventure spec jacket is a semi loft jacket, isn't it? And also fleece yeah, or something. This is the jacket. This is the jacket that I always use, and I just roll it up yeah. uh, and put it in in the hoodie. Yeah, but it looks like that when I fold it. Yeah. So this one you just put in its own pocket. So this is a pocket uh, yeah. zipper. Yeah. So, so this is just any, I think it's peak performance or something like that. But 
I had it for years now, and uh, when it, we talk about the sleeping arrangements later, I bought all these different kinds of pillows, inflatable, but none of them are more comfy than my jacket. In, in, I put it in, I put it in a dry bag, roll it up, put it in a dry bag, and you get all this uh, down pillow. Yeah, I'm so quite amazed great. that you see, say that because I've tried that. I tried to have my um, my puffer jacket, like the dough dough jacket, the same as uh, Matthias, but just a little bit yeah. bigger, and. Um, I tried that. I tried to stuck it into the own pillow, and it's kind of like the breast pocket. You can put it into itself, and I tried to use that as a pillow, but I found that to be really uncomfortable. And kind of like the small down is kind of sticking you on the side of the head. But uh, the yeah, air yeah. pillow that I, I use, to... oh, that is the bomb. It's kind of like it 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 brings my uh, sleeping comfort up with uh, at least ten or maybe twenty percent. It's just I wouldn't go on a camping trip without the air pillow, and that is kind of my luxury item that i bring <laughs> ah yeah. the luxury items, let, let, yeah. let's stay on the clothing because i know as long as you haven't mentioned uh, what you wear on your feet i know we're not done with the uh, with the clothing <laughs> yeah <laughs> so we, we, we bring the extra warm jacket i like to also bring a normal pair of pants unless the riding pants are if i'm if i'm not doing anything else than just riding sleeping in uh, in a tent or something i usually walk around in camp with my biker pants but on longer trips i always bring something uh, sort of civil pants in a way yeah it's very good to have i have uh, my pants or uh, of the type that you could zip off so they um, you can use them as pants and shorts yeah yeah really like yeah. those uh, yeah i have those because they also dual use yes yeah, it's, it's, uh zip off zip off yeah pants. i normally yeah. don't bother uh, with that because my riding pants are so comfortable to wear and i because they are black you, you kind of can wear them like uh regular pants and uh, yeah. of course they wear really nice with my favorite shoes so um yeah and of course it's one thing <laughs> less to bring with you on trips <laughs> So you only have long johns then if you want to <laughs> walk on the streets as a normal Yes, and guy. Uh, amazingly, <laughs> I've got into one bar with long johns and crocs. So uh, that was <laughs> quite quite embarrassing. But still, I got a free beer. So it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I see. I see. So that's the trick. Huh? Crocs yeah, and, and you, long need, you need to have <laughs> really sexy legs. <laughs> I'm not really sure if you remember when we were out camping, but... Um, yeah, I, I, I saw you look at me when I was walking out in the cold water. <laughs> yeah, you're proud of those, <laughs> those legs, aren't you? <laughs> well, you haven't been stalked for your legs as I was from the Lederhose and Motoberfest video. I have to block a lady. No, you're kidding. <laughs> 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 that is a great. Oh, uh, yeah. the Lederhose, and is that your luxury item, Rob? That is my luxury uh, item uh, and the mass, uh, yeah. the beer glass, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. Do you have any tip on foldable uh, Oktoberfest uh, beer glasses? Sorry. Do you have any good tip on uh, on foldable October beer glasses? You you have to just. Uh, sort of make room for the real thing because there are no replacements there there's no oh fold that is a good answer that sure, is a really sure. good answer <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah so so that's clothing and and any more things i mean if it's chilly outside of course a little um yeah hat or something i think we could tell uh, tell the the audience here that uh, we probably will have an episode later with uh, layering and up, layering up and so on on the riding gear and, uh, and yeah. stuff like that. And of course, it's so yeah, in individual sure. so, as well because yeah. everybody wears different stuff compared to if they're freezing at camp or they think it's hot. We are so. For me, uh, for instance, I hate freezing, so I try to always bring enough so I keep warm in all conditions. And of, as you know, I don't ride in uh, below zero degrees, so. Uh, I always use a buff or also when Is that we go the one north, you put up to even the... in summertime I have a yeah, a yeah. wool hat. 
and that's very good when you're sleeping as well in these uh, uh, northern lights, so to speak, in the, in, in, in the summertime. Yeah, and it's a good protection for you mosquitoes need to have that as well. Something for your eyes, and that's where you use the uh, wool hat yeah. for as well. Very good. So don't forget the hat if you go to, to uh, the northern Scandinavia. Or the highlands. Yeah, and a beautiful so, so part with wool. I'm, uh, I don't. People here in the north or Scandinavian countries are well familiar with the wool and the properties of wool. But they, the, it's so damn unique. You can get wet, you can get sweaty with it, but it still keeps you warm. So, and it's really easy to wash. You can just put it in water, and you don't need to use soap on it, and just dry it up, and it will be clean again. So, I really enjoy using wool yeah. when I'm, uh, uh, yeah. Wool as base layer. Mm. That's really good. Yeah, I actually, because everyone, you guys and everyone watching, they already know everything about merino wool. But this summer, it was the first time I used merino wool, actually. Uh, and not in a cold climate, but down through the whole of Turkey. And I used that as a base layer, even on the hot days. I didn't really think it was, we're talking about hot climates now with merino wool. I have a thin merino, yeah, mm. yeah long johns and, and long sleeved uh, jumper, but, and it wasn't the, uh, yeah, it was just as nice without than with it. But that w what struck me is that I, I used the stuff and I didn't have to wash it. Yeah, it, it don't it, smell it out. Didn't sm mm. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't smell at all. That's magic. It hi hides the yeah, smell but it, good. Uh, uh, yeah, like... because you wear it all day, you sweat in it yourself, you're, you're smelling like an uh, old donkey. And, and when you pick it up next morning, it's fresh and ready to use again. And I, I didn't yeah. have to walk on, on, yeah, let's say once a week, just because I thought it was time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so we could agree on that. So wool is uh, really great for... Yeah, you have merino layer. wool, you have different kind of wool, but yeah. um, uh, some people react on wool. They kind of get itchy and it uh, kind of uh, irritates their skin a lot. But I, I, one year when I was uh, training a lot, uh, I, I did train CrossFit earlier. You had something like bam babu bamboo bam bamboos bam something yeah, down yeah. from uh, under down under in Australia I think they made it and that was really amazing it's really easy to dry but the problem was when it first started to stink there was just no way to kind of prevent it from stinking it was just horrible so I just had to throw it away Was it down under where Yeah down under under <laughs> yeah. have you heard about it <laughs> Oh that's cool. Ah okay yeah. <laughs> All That's right. Good, so, guys. so you stinks there. We we uh, have we have the clothes uh, with us. So it's time to perhaps let's take uh, go chronological here. So perhaps uh, eat something. Yeah. And there I know yeah. we differ quite some because <laughs> you two guys you team up on this brand of yours that you like to play with that I think is a little bit like my kids' uh, play kitchen that they had when they were small. Yeah, Trangia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. I, uh, I have a lot of uh, stoves actually, Rob, so it's not only the Trangias. <laughs> no, no. Uh, so... Somewhat of a stoveaholic, I think. Because I, I never been on a trip where I have to stock up for food for a week or anything so so i usually have a daily routine because i have to go into civilization and fill up the some fuel and i get some food for the night and i guess that's the most uh, yeah. usual way to do it so so and, and the burger or, or a uh, brat was that the fuel station yeah, as well I find it, I find it really <laughs> yeah, yeah. unsexy to stop and uh, eat junk food every time because it's it's kind of like here in Norway at least it's kind of like whatever where, wherever you stop it's the same they serve it's kind of burgers it's hot dogs and it's kind of like uh, the same stuff yeah, over boring. and over again and to just stop at the grocery store get yourself some fresh vegetables and 
some meat or some pasta or anything and just slice it up and make something when you come to camp. I think that's kind of like the, the same thing that you take a drink or a beer when you came after celebrating a good day on two wheels. I fi- find the same with uh, hot food as well. If you get uh, kind of like, it's like an intimacy thing going on there outside the tent, just cooking up a great meal before you go to bed. So for me, I find that really nice when I'm out camping. Yeah, yeah. I actually do both, but I, I like to cook on the road. This summer I, I did a test yeah. actually. I packed for like 12 days in the same way that you should have done in the mo- at uh, mountain yeah. hiking. So I could bring everything, nothing need to be kept cooled. So it was like an experiment. And afterwards I don't think that's a good idea because the food was pretty boring actually but i tried to read up on it before to to have good ingredients that taste good even if it looks simple so that was a very interesting experiment but it gets a little bit heavy in the packing even if you because if you pack food for for 12 days and and uh, even if it's dry food and of different kinds that taste better than uh, uh, than you only use dry food so to speak that you pour hot water in uh, it gets pretty heavy in the packing. So what I usually actually do and like to do it, uh, I have always some of these dry uh, food bags because you might need them if you don't yeah. find anything else. But it's very good to buy something fresh every or other day that could be kept in the yeah, packing. That's a good point. I always keep a dry yeah dry yeah. freeze meal in a bag in a, like a, a reserve if i break down or my bike uh, get i get a puncture or if i just need don't manage to uh, get the store before they're close i always have one in backup if yeah. i need it but in most cases i, I never i never need it i try to kind of if uh, if i'm out riding on a saturday i try to uh, buy twice as twice twice the amount of food on the saturday so in sunday sto- stores are closed so uh, but the kind of like the yeah d- norway is closed yeah the dry freeze stuff is kind of yeah. it makes you <laughs> uh, after eating it a couple of times you you kind of shit brick houses afterwards it's just yeah. fucking up your stomach like you won't believe <laughs> don't ask me how i know so, so oh, for, that's interesting for, for me i because i i have um let's say i i very rarely stay at campings uh, um sort of what do you call it those organized campsites. camping yeah, yeah c- maybe it's called yeah. campsites because but but since when when i go camping and tenting and everything that's mostly in sweden um and then i i use the shelters yeah and and there you have a good pla- uh, fireplace and everything so when it comes to sort of the stoves that I bring, this is the only thing I got. I don't have the full uh, Trangia kit or anything because either I cook on the fire and then I like to take yeah. some time and yeah, be, be Neanderthal about it. And, and if I don't do that, I just get by with this and cook something up and that's more for function to, to get, I'm hungry, let's eat something. Yeah, that's the jet boil, uh, same as the jet boil. Yeah, it's a jet boil or is it uh, the Bill Tema version that? No, this is the Optimus Prime. Opt- uh, no, Ooh. something, ah. op- Optimus something. Yeah, it's so, the same, so, just yeah, another it, name. Me, yeah. It. <clears throat> yeah. So, ah, but so, that's a good yeah. kit. Yeah, it's really good. It's small and it does the job. I cook the morning coffee, water in here. Yeah, just uh, perhaps I have uh, just a little side note. One, uh, one pot. A little meat. side note to the jet boils because of the, um, the, the how to say it the the rills underneath it. If you bring that into the tent the and heat, uh, heat it up inside a tent or a close in closed encounter, uh, yeah, you understand what I mean. It will produce a lot of CO, so it can be really toxic for you when you're out camping. So um, I highly, I'm not recommending those kind of uh, pans if you do not use it uh, out in free air. 
even if you're really ventilating it, it it's no problem but uh, you need to be really careful with those pants uh, especially inside the tent yeah i i've never used it inside a tent uh usually if, yeah if there's with the shelters that I usually go to, I use the shelter to to cook and sit there, but I sleep in the tent. Yeah, uh, usually like that. So yeah, to use a, 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 the gas stove is pretty nice if you use it within the tent. Actually, I, I sometimes I use this stove. It's a mini Tangia. Yeah. It's very small. If you compare it to the to the beer can. Yeah, it's oh. quite nice when you are out on a single trip like like me and you when you were out you make the morning breakfast on that uh, thing it was yeah a big egg and bacon so even luxury with some onion in it it's perfect yeah. ad meal <laughs> but it's good it's a good small stove that doesn't take uh, much place and i have also modified it so i could uh, I could use uh, uh, the multi-fuel burner to it. Yeah, and I've been using a lot of stoves. Uh, so I have the light options from Primus. I have uh, from Optimus, and I have a couple of, uh, I think, X, uh, MSR, I think it's called. Yeah, the Amer uh, American brand. Yeah. And of all the stoves yeah. I own, most of them are really nice. But of all of them, the Trangia is just, there's just a class above it's simple and it's easy it packs really nice inside each other and it's just yeah it's so functional and good so and it yeah i really favor the trangia when i'm out uh, camping yeah I, as i said i have a lot of stoves so i could use many of them i have even been motor camping with this m40 yeah. stainless steel stove oh, as that well. is a classic that's a real classic and really cool if you like to want to make food on open yeah, fire if you as take well. a look at the uh, on some of the forums online you there's a, a own society just with those cooking gears and old stoves and the military graded stuff and uh, yeah it's quite interesting and quite nostalgic nostalgic another thing that i think it's important with when we're talking about uh, how to manage food or, or beverage it's um, I don't know if you see it in the frame, my little thermos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This one. I'm not not joking. This is an, an item that I always bring if you talk about uh, for longer camping trips or if you even do uh, adventure rides with bed and yeah. breakfast. Because I always like coffee on the ride, middle of the day, somewhere. So I always use that. Oh, exactly. That's cool. It's also a good way to if you uh, if you make your coffee water in the morning, you can also store uh, heat the hot water that you get over from the breakfast in the thermos. That's perfect. So that is a good item. That is one of those who always are with me. One thing, but because I uh, if I go light packing, I bring as little as possible. So only the little gas burner, I guess, but. Sometimes I, I I have the panniers and the top roll. That's what I fit in there. But um, some things, if I want to go riding, and because cooking by the fire is sort of something that I could enjoy an entire evening, uh, yeah. and make it take time because it's it's great to cook outdoors. So or better, one thing, uh, buy some entrecot on the way and just fry it two minutes on each side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or some whatever roadkill we find along the way to to the campsite. Oh yeah, I heard squirrels so are quite good. One, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this one is awesome to have on on the campsite. Uh, this is built yeah. here, uh, um just to bring um, and fry stuff. Yeah, but when you put that on, yeah, put that a on a stove, or you put it on the fire, nice. it kind of it becomes all black and uh, so soded, soded. I'm not sure the word. So yeah, sorry, and and it just yeah. like it's stained to everything, and I, I feel every time I, I need something to put it inside before I put it inside my bag pack. Yeah. I, I'm not sure. I don't I don't like putting. Um, kettles and uh, frying pans on that inside my bags because it, it, it smells out everything at, yeah. Yeah. yeah usually i i wash it of course uh afterwards okay. and, and it comes with a little bag yeah okay so and, like and you pe keep well, it I inside just... with your other gear or 
uh, no, no, yeah. I, I use I also use the uh, Murica, a similar one from Murica. Yeah, I have the Petromax one. Yeah. The picnic pan, and, and I use it, uh, I stick it into outside the dry bags, but into the holsters of the Oh, of the yeah, bags. in between. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. is a good detail. How, 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 couldn't I, how I didn't I think about that? Bringing a fry pan, that must be a luxury item if you don't have it in the Trangia That is already. actually quite brilliant. You just put it inside behind. Yeah, same same place where you you also uh, uh, store your axe if you have one. Yeah, up, uh, uh, when it comes to the axe, uh, do you have a little bit of a bad uh, conscience there, uh, Robert? What do I have? No, just uh, the axe you are uh, you borrowed from me. Do you still have it? Oh, that one. Oh yeah, there it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Aha, I borrowed this one. from you when th that video. Yeah, for sure. And uh, but because yeah, I I really like it. So <laughs> I, I'd like I like to keep it. So but yeah, do you think uh, I can have it back great. or? Yeah, sure. It, it's about time, and I think the people are waiting for it. So, yeah, uh, yeah take it. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate that. Ah, that's perfect. Yeah. <clears throat> this is a really good axe, and I highly recommend it. So, and uh, I think I'm going to borrow it uh, to Matthias now so he can try it as well. So, here we go, Matthias. Ah, wow. Is it? Oh, that's nice for me. <laughs> Thank you. What? What a great thing. I think it's perfect to use as a, <laughs> you know, when you hammer your tent pegs and you have a spatula for your uh, fry pan and you, yeah, all the camp stuff you do. Perfect axe. Yeah, hey, thank you, you, you're me. welcome. <laughs> Just enjoy it and I can have it back next time we're out camping. Yeah, me and, yeah, me and Thomas, we had it. So now it's your turn, yeah. Matthias. But it's great because it, it's really a camper's axe because you can hold it in a way so you can carve with it and you can uh, cook with it and it's it's sharp as a blade so you can cut your beef and whatever so yeah and, and it's, yeah. it's yeah, kind of amazed me how good works as a chef knife and spatula and everything and you also make your campfire yeah, and you have, with it yeah you have, <clears throat> yeah the swedish are really good at this, at this stuff you have the trangia swedish brand you have fjällreven swedish brand you have kostrum swedish brand you have granforsbruks swedish brand you have primus Swedish brand and I can go on like that forever and it's just like what is it with you guys and making good camping stuff and you have the Mora knives as well it's really cheap and it's really high quality and uh, I'm just blown away how good and um, yeah when it comes to packing and cooking and everything I just uh, before I used the big Sami knife like the old traditional Norwegian uh, Sami lap knife and after I got this uh, axe and a small hatchet or a small axe, outdoor axe like that. Yeah, that's the knife I'm talking about. And oh, now with talking. a smaller <laughs> knife, so you can cut your beef and you use the axe to that's chop up the knife. wood. It's just, it is revolutionized the uh, cooking and uh, wood making in camp. It just, I really love it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is that wow. the eight inch yeah. or nine inch? It's a nine oh. inch. Th th that's from Crocodile Dundee, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I've seen it in a movie yeah. somewhere. <laughs> I must say it's a new year, so a new opportunity. So I got me a Sami knife and I also got me a, uh, a Sami belt. Mm. Yeah, oh, you've got another knife hanging get, uh, there, don't you? Yeah, it's a Sami knife as well that I have for many years. But this one is going to be the camping knife for the year. Probably it will. Um, what, what, what are the? I will so, change it for that. What do you use that, that size of knife for? Uh, the same as, uh, the same as you use the axe for. No, no, chopping wood. Oh. You have it as a spatula at your fry pan. You are preparing your food, and uh, yeah, it's a cool yeah, thing, like, you know. <clears throat> I got it from a guy from. Uh, I'm not Sapmi. sure if. Oh, in, uh, in the I'm Swedish not sure Lapland. many people know about it, but uh, I, I hear a lot of people ask me, why do you need that big lap knife or Sami knife? And um, my grandfather was half uh, Sami in Norway. And um, 
Uh, if you take those uh, out on okay. Vidda, on the, out up north in Norway, you have just those small branches the, um, uh, on the tip of the trees. And those are really hard to chop off with uh, an axe. It's kind of like, I don't, I'm not sure what yeah, does it, yeah. but if you have the lap knife, the Sami knife, it chops that really nice. So it's kind of like a really multi-purpose knife up on Vidda or in the northern part of Norway, probably the northern part of Sweden as well. I will do as I always. I have used the axe for for years now, so I will I will try out this big yeah. knife instead. I, I show you my knife, and I'm 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 not as manly as you because I bought a fishing knife for my daughter when she was seven, <laughs> and and uh, this is it because I bought I bought cooler knives. But I bought brown and green, and they're all out in the woods somewhere because I had no idea where I put them. But this blue knife, I always know where it is because you can see it. <laughs> so that's nice. But I also bring this little cutting board, and yeah, and and cutting with a knife like this is not the best. So for this year, I bought. A cool little uh, bushcraft. Uh, I'm going to use it as a cooking knife. <laughs> this little uh, bugger. What the f because now I have space for my uh, yeah, knock uh, my, my hand and everything. Okay, so do we gonna do we gonna make to a wager on this channel about how f many days it goes before you cut your fingers with that thing? <laughs> <laughs> How did, it's crazy. did this episode go from what you stuff in your bags into a knife channel? <laughs> why, why would I cut my fingers e more easily on this one than on this one? You, okay, first of all, you're a fireman. You take you're clumsy. You're Swedish, and um, yeah, I, I think you th think it's a small knife, and it's actually a big knife, and you just. Yeah, you do something funny and then, oh, there's no. my finger. I, I will send you the finger over messenger later. Okay. So, like yeah. <laughs> I think that's a perfect knife, Rob. It looks good for yeah, everything you will do well. up there. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> but, but should we be serious here? Uh, the, one of the best type of knives to have on an ad ride is actually the, the multi tool. No, isn't I don't it? agree. Not at all. It's rubbish to use on uh, the leather man or uh, stuff. I don't agree to that. The best knife I found to use on the trail is the Mora uh, can spool with the thin blade. This is perfect for cooking. It's perfect for slicing. It's perfect for everything. And it's and actually it's one of the best out there. And no, I'm not sponsored yeah, by Mora. But, uh, but I have to say, I, I often used a a, a multi tool, and uh, actually, I must say that I never go without the multi tool on trips like this because I use the tool yeah, but part of it as well. What do you use the multi tool for? So how do you find uh, the pliers? I can understand, but the knives and the saw and everything else. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have actually two of them, and they are good at different things. The the Leatherman is actually uh, really good for food prepping because it had a serrated blade and yeah. a normal blade. Uh, but then I have a Victorinox Swiss tool, and that has also a a bit kit in it. So you uh, will I compose that kit so it fits my KTM. So every small things that I could adjust on the bike uh, with those uh, torques. Yeah. I can do with that as well. So it works yeah, very I think great. It's, it's, I think the purpose is to find something, a tool. Like you say, you always try to find a tool that you can use for multi-purposes. Uh, and of course, if you can... Yeah. Yeah, if you can utilize... Well. If you need to drill some small holes or something to repair the plastics of the bikes or... Uh, yeah, I think everything. that is a really Electric good point because bringing an axe and bringing a knife and bringing... It's kind of like you only use it for maybe two, one, one or two things. And uh, of course, if you have a multi-tool you can use for so many applications, I think that is a really valuable thing no matter what other people might think. But you will see me with the Sami knife on the trails. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's cool. But it's really fun. Oh, actually, sorry, what's a guy the out head, there uh, out there that sent me the belt? He has made it with his hands, actually, the belt. So, um, wow. But the the the, the Sommi knife is from Norway, actually. Yeah, Strömming. Strömming. that's a famous uh, Norwegian um, North Northern um, uh, blacksmith. Blacksmith. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, okay, so that's cool. A little bit of the tools yeah, as but, well. Yeah, uh, but when <laughs> a little bit shifting towards um, how do you guys pack your uh, luggage? It's kind of like where do you put your certain stuff? Like for me, because my of my work, I th- try to find everything. I'm kind of like organized, so I want to find everything in with my close eyes. So I have. Yeah, I was into that question uh, as well. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, on the right side, I have certain stuff and on the auxiliary pockets behind, I have some stuff and on the stinger, I yeah, so I, I kind of, I'm really struct- uh, structured in how I pack and uh, is yeah. it the same for you guys? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I usually have sort of, generally speaking, kitchen stuff on in my left pannier. I have uh, clothing, shoes and stuff on the right side. And the camping kit is one bag, the top roll. OK, you have that That's on top? That's usually okay. how I pack. Sorry? Actually, Do you have that on top? Uh, yeah, uh, usually the, the sleeping bag, the air mattress yeah. and, and things like that. It, it's about four. Bag. Four or five kilos, and and the other bags. But but the big panniers, I because I also bring water to the, to camp, and I usually have that on the lightest side. Uh, so because if you p- bring all the food and stuff and kitchen gear, that pannier will be more heavy. So then I bring the water on the right side, for instance. Yeah, but do you bring your That's... do you bring water with you inside the bags on the bike, or do you put it in the camel back on your backpack? Uh, I, I have it in the uh, in the camel back, but if I bring a one and a half little bottle or something extra, oh. I, I bring that in the bag, or I put it in a dry bag in the bag. Yeah, I, yeah, I understand. Dry bags work okay. really well. Yeah, how about you, Matthias? Yeah, I pack all my camping gear, the what I sleeping gear like tent or hammock and uh, and so on into the right side of the bike on the side uh, on the side bag. I always start with it stuffed in its bags and so on, but after the first night, I uh, take my hammock for example or tent and and have it in the bottom. Uh, and then I have my uh, sleeping mattress uh, that I always roll up and into its bag actually and then I have the tarp uh, on top because I want to set up the tarp first yeah. <clears throat> I'm, I do the same and yeah so, and, uh, so I as I go with the trip I just stuff it into the bag because it doesn't take so much room and it packs better together if you just mix it and not put it in their own bag so to speak uh, and that's a good way it's faster to put it down it's pa- faster to put it up so that's a typical thing i do and on the left side i have my uh, my clothes my stove and some other things sometimes i have my warm layer uh, easily on top of either right or left yeah. side i could choose where i have met most but room. what do you, what do you and have then back the in the auxiliary bag pockets is on the top roll uh, auxiliary pockets I use uh, for tools. I have uh, a tool bag, a tool roll on one side. I also have some chain lube there <clears throat> and a small towel for uh, for mechanical stuff yeah. and so on. And then on the on the right side I have uh, a water purifier and uh, what I do uh, well, at least a water purifier and that doubles up as um, I should have have it here and show it actually uh, it doubles up at my as my water container oh, yeah yeah bec- yeah so I fill it up with water after I purified it and it's still there so I could use it and that is like let's say 600 yeah. milliliters and then I also have the water bladder in my either in my backpack or in my my, uh, my uh, uh, tank bag. But do you, do you, do you, you use the tent loop. pole bag or what it's called? And um, when you're out camping with your tent, do you use the own pocket for uh, the tent poles? Or uh, if, I uh, if I use the tent, yes. Uh, in any case, I always stuff it away from the tent because I have the tent loose in the bottom. Yeah. Or in the top, if it's a tent, actually. It's uh, the hammock I, I put in the bottom, so it depends 
on which system yeah, I always I use. bring the sleeping bag and um, I always bring the sleeping bag and tent or my hammock on the top uh, stinger on top on the, on the rear and uh, I always yeah, because yeah. the tent is easy to compress into into a, like the the what the dry bags so that can pack much yeah. smaller if you t- uh, take out the tent poles and bring it back yeah. to the um, uh, in an old po- own exactly. pocket. And on the auxiliary pockets behind, I, like you, on one side I have tools, and on the other side I actually have uh, the knife, the axe, uh, the coffee cup, and um, for easy access because I use the cup a lot when I'm drinking and um, just to have easy access to it behind there it's easy because yeah. it bre- taking up and down all the big loops on the side pockets are quite cumbersome when you do it a lot T- uh, thomas yeah so i have the i also have the thermos as you say and some uh, snacks yeah. always snacks, snacks. yeah so <laughs> but, but, uh, but, yeah but uh, you know like uh, uh, peanuts and yeah. the racing yeah the, the, the tour blending so we call it in energy Norway. filling during the ride and and some uh, li- um, uh, to to hydrate it's yeah. very important so you need to have that very easily on what top of i, I want to uh, follow up on what also uh, steve uh, mentioned in the chat here uh yeah. chain loop thomas do you pack chain loop yeah yeah oh yeah i bring it i have a little one uh, a little pocket on um a, a little uh, bottle like uh, you use for uh, a chain for uh, bicycles i just f- took that out and i put in um gear oil no not gear oil transmission oil from bill Tema, and i put that inside it and i have it in my jacket pocket so i just i'm, I'm okay. not that uh kind of say I'm not that uh, good on lubing my chain, but I do it every thousand, yeah, yeah one thousand kilometers, I think. Yeah, I do it at home. Uh, me too, let- because there is a saying about lubing, because you should never lube a, a, a dirty yeah. chain. Uh, I mean, we uh, went uh, on the Turkey trip, eleven thousand kilometers, and we we actually stopped and lubed the chain once because we thought we should do it but we did that once yeah. on 11000 kilometers yeah yeah but but i'm pretty much like you there anyway but i have i bring uh, wd40 vd40 uh, as very small bottle and i only use it to just uh, get the chain quiet that actually. is quite interesting because i use vd40 I'm not to very good on, on clean my the chain, chain either <laughs> I never done that on the trip. No, I never clean it on the trip. I just when I come back, I use WD forty on my chain to kind of clean it with a little um, brush. Yeah. And I take off the worst uh, crap before I put the hose on it. And afterwards, I just clean it with. Um, I put on oil on a little rag, and I just put it on. Um, yeah. Turn the wheel and uh, put it on the chain, and of course, yeah. chain oil. I think there's there's a lot of myths and misconceptions about the whole chain oiler you see actually people putting on chain oilers like the, the ones that drips on the chain and i say oh i can write 30 yeah, 40 thousand on one chain and sprocket before i need to change it well that's all good and uh, <clears throat> good and great but i, I normally chain no i don't i don't i put i, I change my chain, chain and sprockets around twenty thousand kilometers and it but but, but. But but chain oilers are good for one thing because the Tenere uh, 700 is uh, known for the corroding spokes on the wheel. Yeah, I don't care, but, but I don't care about it unless it's affecting function. But chain oil- oilers are great for that because they get so much oil, so it splats all over the place. So you get oil on all the spokes, and that prevents corrosion <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah. marketing abc you kind of you kind of create the problem and you sell the solution so <clears throat> i think chain oilers and oil but that is quite on the right side of what we are yeah, talking well, about today well let's yeah, have yeah, a yeah, little yeah. bit back on topic yeah. we are flowing away here but okay chain lubing that's a story for itself i think but organized packing yeah. But do you do you have a own I package that, uh, for the, how, the dirty uh, the dirty underwear and dirty socks? And do you have a own dry, dry bag for yeah. that with a separate color, or do yeah. you just keep it in the yeah. bag with the rest? No, 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 
No, no, no. It def no, I, definitely I, I, is. Yeah, I try to use dry bags to organize uh, things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like shit when you open it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So oh, that's good. But let's go to sleep. No. Not here, but uh, at the camping site. So for 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 myself, when I started this adventure stuff, and it was only about four years ago and a half or something. I bought some stuff. I bought a tent. I bought a sleeping bag and a mattress. And that's the same stuff I all uh, use since then. I haven't bought, like you guys, you, I guess you have a, like a golf bag. Yeah, let's go. Let's go for that uh, today because it's a little bit damp today. So let's go for the... <laughs> You're right about that, Rob. Yeah, yeah. I'm quite <laughs> snobby so when it comes there. to camping. <laughs> Yeah, I have this tent that was about um, 100 euros, uh, Urberi, and a really cheap uh, sleeping bag. I bought a warmer one for the, war for the colder period, but I put my mon money on the sleeping mattress, actually, nine centimeter and really isolated. So, yeah. because if you want to stay warm, that's, I mean, that's in the mattress mostly. Yeah, mattress is comfort and warm is just key one. But also yeah. a good sleeping bag is quite important. And uh, the, the crazy yeah. thing about um, this camping gear is that the more expensive it is, the less it pack or less it weigh. So uh, it can be, you can find a really cheap uh, solution or cheap tent or cheap sleeping bag, but mostly they pack huge. So if you want to compress your, air, uh, your sleeping bag, uh, get as light or minimal package as possible, you need to go up in price. And it's insane how high the price goes if you really want to... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. So, so I'm I'm really happy with the tent. It's a two-person tent because then I can have all my gear in there also, and I'm a tent guy. And I'm, I have sleeping bags that works well. But if I would change one thing or perhaps two, that's uh, the mattress, really warm and so on. But it's. Next time, when I buy something new, I will buy something wider. It's What I've got is 58 centimeters wide. And the way I sleep, that, that's not enough. If I lay, lay on my back, my elbows touch the ground. Uh, and, and yeah. And also the sound. Oh, yeah, that's the worst. My, <laughs> yeah. My body is in the tents uh, next to me. Whenever I want to turn around to the other side because I'm, <laughs> I'm sort of a kung fu fighter in the bed. Oh, that was uh, she said. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so I turn great. and twist a lot, and uh, it's it sounds like a, a balloon party. <laughs> How do you fill up your uh, your sleeping bag, Rob? It's sort of a built-in hand pump. It f feels like you're giving CPR yeah, but, to, to but someone. Do you, do you feel it like it will explode? or do No, you... no, no. I, I, I fill it up <laughs> I, and, and, and then I lay, lay down on it and then I release the air until I'm just floating just above the ground. So, so it's, it's quite... If I just sit on yeah, it, yeah, but that's good technique. Yeah, so so if I sit on it, I will touch the ground. But if I uh, lay on it, then then it sort of sustains me. Yeah, uh, that's great. I think it's so. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I think it's important yeah, so to invest in a good uh, air mattress, and I think it's really important to have a good sleeping bag, especially here in the northern parts, because it can get really cold in the night, and. Um, if yeah. you start freezing in the night time, it doesn't get really comfortable. You, re you really start hating life when it's getting really cold. And th that is one of the best things about uh, tent camping, to be honest. That is to have the possibility to warm, heat up the tent with a trangia before you need to get out of the sleeping bag and put on your clothes. Because it can be really mm. cold. And a lot of people think that the more you put on with clothing, the warmer you get inside the sleeping bag. But that's not the case. 
if you put on too much clothes you actually get colder than you do without because it's the air that um, yeah not too technical but it's the yeah. air that uh, kind of isolate you from the cold you can also get yeah. wet as well that's a good point but okay so if, if you look at your camping gear rob is that anything you would like to change or you happy with it um i would like to sleep more comfortable um to uh, like because i as i mentioned i'm like a wrestler on, on that thing yeah yeah so, yeah some, yeah that, that my my buddy seymour <laughs> he's uh, wherever he is it could be uh, on a one plank or over a fence or whatever if he decides to sleep he just and then he sleeps so <clears throat> sorry <laughs> uh, but i i i take time to fall asleep and i hate anything that starts annoying me and so on so next time i will get the it's all about the sleeping mattress. That's the main thing. I want a wider one, 60, 65 centimeters at least. Yeah. And yeah. a quiet one. And I hate being enclosed in a sleeping bag. I, I will go for more like a wider thing there also. Uh, like a sleeping... There, there are some cool uh, fundraising companies that came along with the that are really different it's not just a kilt a quilt yeah. or whatever you say or a bag but yeah yeah so i'd like to invest more in in the sleeping comfort uh, that's good yeah, i think that is i i can All sleep right. like in a coffin when i'm in my sleeping bag i can just go on my back and put my hands up like this and i can sleep and uh, forget about it it's crazy <laughs> That, that's one thing that is inter interesting about sleeping bags. So I have a few of them. And uh, I have both of the uh, mummy style. You know those that get narrow, narrow yeah. to the feet. Yeah. To save weight or space or whatever. Or volume. But I hate those. I really like those real square ones. Because uh, I, I need room with my legs so yeah. to speak. To, to kung fuing some uh, there, Rob. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So th th that was quite funny because I spent uh, the night in a yeah outside sleeping in a sleeping bag with Seymour. He had his own. Wait, wait, wait a minute! You spent but, the night in a sleeping bag with Seymour. Um, That's interesting. Yeah. Sounds well, like in video episode. Anyhow, <laughs> <laughs> he had. Uh, uh, two of these things uh, that uh, you, you, there's some sort of piece of char <laughs> charcoal. <laughs> oh, please tell us more. <laughs> I had fire, uh, fire in my sleeping bag that night with Seymour. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll get to the point. I'll get to the point. There was some sort of a hand warmer that was with charcoal and you lit the end and it was sort of in a fireproof uh, lining there and you closed it and that kept warm for 10 hours yeah sippo got so, something like that yeah so i put that in the sleeping bag down by the feet and it was i actually got uh, burning coal in the inside my sleeping bag but that was quite nice and it worked Unless you fiddle and op accidentally open that little box with your feet, you know. Yeah, but how, no. what did Seymour do? Was he inside the sleeping bag with you or was he on the side or...? Uh, uh, let's talk about hammocks <laughs> now, so... <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so, I tried hammocks. Yeah. But... But the regular ones or Dreimur? Uh, it, it was the Amok uh, Dreymor, the yeah, flying saucer thing. And I really sleep well in it. It's really comfortable. But I felt Did it's... you have a whiskey before? Sorry? Did you have a whiskey before? Uh, no. Ah, but that's mandatory. Yeah, yeah I guess. Uh, it's... But 
makes it more difficult to get in it uh, too. Yeah, but I, 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 I'm a tent guy. I like crawling into my little cave there and, and have my little home there. And also setting, maybe it was a beginner's thing, but I always get through half a bottle of wine before the hammock guys have their uh, hammocks set up. Yeah. My tent is <laughs> done. But that comes with practice. And oh, that is like tent as well. Some p- tents are really easy. Like your tent, you just throw it on the ground and it poop and it comes up uh, for all or- other guys we need to really put in the, all the rods and it quite it takes quite some time i actually yeah, pre- prefer yeah. the amok because it's 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 the best bed i own and because my back is hurting i got a prolapse in my lower back so uh, sleeping on in the air is just so damn comfortable yeah it is comfortable i give you yeah. that um yeah I, I must say i'm um both a tent and hammock guy but in the Swedish but do woodlands, you bring both? it's perfect with a hammock. Uh, no, never. Uh, no, no, never. But, uh, you know, in our forests, it's perfect with a hammock because it's uh, not that easy every time to find a, a flat spot uh, that you need yeah. with a tent and and so on. But when you go on the highlands for this summer, two of the nights at least, I was like, ah, I should have brought yeah. the tent. So, But then I was in the woodlands again and i was yes mm. i mean the <laughs> in the right element again so yeah i always try to plan that out I think if i'm differs. going into the woods and or the woodlands i try to bring my hammock yeah. but if i'm going into the highlands like you say it it's the tent no matter where because it's can it can really easy be quite windy and um, uh, when you have yeah. a lot of wind or you have a lot of weather it's much easier or much better to just go into the tent and it's much more cozy and it's much more sh- shielded for the elements yeah, I had to put up my hammock on the ground actually, and the tarp uh, more like a tent, and uh, and the hammock suspension to the bike and to one pole and fix everything. But that worked uh, very yeah. well actually. But in a high wind, it would would have been very difficult. Then I would like my luxury tent. So I have my, mm. you know, the Hilton Inn tents, uh, Hilde Bay <laughs> tents, a couple of them, both a a. Um, a self-standing two yeah hilleberg is the rolls royce uh, in tent making it's no it's there's no competition i think hilleberg is quite probably the best brand in the world when it comes to tent uh only thing here is i should use them more often (laughs) we should camp more (laughs) we should do that soon (laughs) that's a conclusion this summer for me uh, spring and summer will be all about sweden and norway so there will be a lot more camping for me this year yeah so i'm looking forward to that but when it so so we may run into oh, each yeah. other. Oh yeah, high <laughs> sun, uh, pro- probability that that will happen. But uh, on a little side note, on the packaging things, uh, is there one luxury item you always bring, or there's one thing you can't go camping without? <clears throat> no, I wouldn't say a luxury item, but, but but I will turn it in my point. What what was it that I didn't brought that I? Regret yeah, that's that a I good didn't point. Bring with me. What did you bring that you didn't yeah. have use for? What was that? This one. I bought it especially for fishing <laughs> with a bike to pack it. And I have never brought it with a bike ever because I forgot it when I go away. I have had it in my van, of course. Is and this used a fishing a rod? I could show how it looks if you take the time. It's a really nice yeah. fishing rod. <laughs> in uh yeah but something we didn't mention that but i would be completely lost uh, without it and it's it's what i have yeah. to bring all the time you need ah that's good you you must have this yeah, because, mm. yeah. yeah. that's abc yeah yeah that's not the luxury item that's uh you mu- yeah. uh, must have yeah this. so don't forget that but there's a couple of must-haves, let's be honest. You have the headlamp and you have a mosquito net or bug oil. Or like I use something called Thermacell. It's a really good uh, yeah. thing you can put on your gas canister. Yeah. And um, of course, wet wipes. That's an absolute oh, yeah. must. So you can wipe your uh, yeah. genitals or your ass when you've been uh, into the woods. And 
Good there's point. one thing you absolutely must have when you go camping, and that is the crocs. You can't be without it. It's brilliant ah, for oh, walking. It's brilliant for running. It's brilliant for bathing. You can do it in the showers. You can do, you can use it for everything. Yeah, for sure. We haven't really started me and Matthias using the crocs, but we're we're not far away. Oh, you will. Yeah, I think Crocs actually are great. I have ones, but um, uh, but I don't bring it on the on the motorcycle trip. I use ty- typical normal sandals. <laughs> the flip flops. But I think it's good. Uh, I think it's good. A good point that you said you could bathe with it as well. Walk out in the uh, if it's rocky or, or well, so. Well, it's been a long uh, time since you got something. You go out running just to remember the sound. Flip 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 flip. <laughs> <laughs> I, I usually also bring this little bugger for filtering water. If if I run out of my own water, it, it takes no place and I yeah. can just scoop up and drink yeah, from wherever. Yeah, that is a good I'm point good. because here in Norway, we are so, sh- uh, how to say it, spoiled with the great water quality. You can, as, as long as the water is uh, free flowing, you can drink it from about every source you can find but i do understand that it's not the case in sweden and other places yeah because most of the water uh, that you find in in sweden when you're camping are small 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 uh, lakes yeah. really small really small lakes and that's still water and and you don't know what's in there so uh, yeah, yeah, that is it's that is one thing, thing that kind of um, surprised me a lot the last time I was to Sweden. When you come from Norway, all the waters are kind of blue and really uh, easy to see through. But the waters in Sweden are really like muddy and uh, really hard to like. It it looks dirty, in a way. Yeah, did you taste it? Because it's actually Franciscana that we have filled oh, all our yeah. lakes with. So it's it's a bit you, you, you didn't knew that. Through it. No, I tried uh, to wash. I tried to wash myself in the water. I think Matthias had it on v- video, and uh, I didn't get clean at all. I just um... oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> I got the Swedish smell. Uh, some some. Let's sum up with the small tips. I also bring when, when I I have this little pot if I go cooking camping these are for airplane uh, if you want to bring stuff on an airplane this is where you can put your shampoo and stuff so I have dishwash and oil just food oil yeah but where you put your conditioner uh, where do you put your conditioner Thomas? Uh, on my chest hair where do you rub it <laughs> <laughs> And of course, you are so funny, guys. Coffee grinder and and this. Yeah, that is actually yeah. quite nice because, of, believe it or not, yesterday, I finally went to the step and bought myself a coffee grinder. I don't have a ma- manual coffee grinder. I have one electrician or electric one on the kitchen, but uh, bringing with me on trips, I've never done it. But uh, now, from now on. It's a new world. I would start grinding my own coffee. It's unbelievable. Yeah, that's nice. Are you going to have the grinder at your motor oh, yeah. camps? Uh, I have that grinder, but I saw also there's an app for it. <laughs> an app? Ah, <laughs> uh, that sounds horrible. I use I'm, I'm, I'm letting cafe, that normal sink in a little cafe. bit. <laughs> to boil it. <laughs> I, I'm letting that s- yeah, Speaking. we just let it uh, just let it put it in the air for a couple of uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you oh, did, if you understand okay. it, put it down in the comments below. <laughs> I, I see it's a very good flow in the comments here. I need to to recap on those later. It's a very very yeah, good that is flow really there. nice uh, because I haven't been looking at that. I've been busy with you guys. Yeah, yeah that that's part of the fun. I'm, I'm sorry, we 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 don't keep up with the chat during the talk because uh yeah you guys take all my concentration to interact with so i think we have (laughs) one more question yeah Yeah. what did you bring last time that you won't bring next time unnecessary things my wife (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) do you count with your wife no actually i never brought her but (laughs) <laughs> oh, that is a good question because I, 
I normally because my packing is been uh, perfectionate, uh, perfectionate. I don't know how to say it in English, but perfectionate. Perfected over the years and I always try to put away the stuff yeah. that I don't use and everything I bring with me are things I do use but um, I do yeah but if you think back then uh, at the time when you when you started and um, and uh, kit, kitted so extra to speak. shoes and extra pants that is without a doubt the stuff that I brought uh, took with me that I'd never used I just used my crocs and uh, okay. riding pants for everything yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. You, Rob. I I can't I can't actually think about anything. Of course, there are some stuff that I don't use every time, but I still bring it because what if? But, but personal hygiene. What do you use there? What do you bring with you? A tooth uh, a toothbrush and a deodorant and. Um... A hard yeah. uh, and the wipes and uh, of course uh, liquid uh, soap i use shower shower cream for everything that you yeah. use a soap for actually sometimes i have had a hard soap as well because they are really good and they, they can't leak yeah so the one you, you the I'm old ones yeah guy. yeah yeah i have used both and i like both of them yeah it's perfect i use hard soap but the, but the, but the, the brilliant said. part with hard soap is where do you first use it and where do you last use it think about that <laughs> the first place well, you do it is in your you face need... and the last place you do it in the ass so it's kind of like yeah but you don't do it like that thomas that sounds so okay weird. how do you do it <laughs> hard soap hard soap is not like a roll-on that you go like yeah. this with so <laughs> But that's interesting. That's interesting. And uh, I was thinking about something else here. Uh, hmm. Forgot it. All right. Uh, In the shower. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Towel. Towels. Micro towel. Yeah. That's good. Uh, I use yeah, a micro. I have this size. Yeah, the same that Robert does. Yeah, the Viber thing. I think I'm pretty much into Thomas here. I think I have. Uh, cooked down my gear during the year so it's not many times i one thing that i always bring with me that i almost never use <laughs> that's the drone <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> that's crazy and i regret it every time why didn't i spend time with the drone but when i'm into the adventure i'm not really into oh i must stop and and put up the drone uh, but it actually think, doesn't yeah, take that uh, much time i think we have a episode there a video making on the road there because talking about packing and uh, routines and everything we mm. that that's part of packing and, and camping and so on also so but yeah. i guess i mean we, we're the power bank we're closing in on on one hour and 15 minutes soon so i guess it's time to wrap up and and um yeah let's then we put our heads together and come up with a new uh episode idea yeah and and, and yeah. guys out there so i mean come uh, you can bring in suggestions also we're talking about different topics like this just live having a beer talking about the topic but we also spoke about guests and doing other things like that. So keep the uh, suggestions coming. And there's also a link to a form where you can send in ideas and feedback and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, yeah, we would that. highly appreciate that because uh, it's really important for yeah. us to kind of give back what you guys uh, want the most. And for us, we, we have thoughts and ideas on every topic, to be honest. Yeah. yeah absolutely so and also we have uh, the idea with yeah interviewing people from different countries about riding in those countries so suggestions on countries yeah. to dive into yeah uh, there so and we will all right we will probably need to make an episode where we are all three in camp doing camping cooking and uh, just having a blast as well so we'll see how we yeah, can manage sure. that absolutely a live one from the forest 
from the forest. Yeah, don't don't forget to bring the whiskey. I never bring. I, yeah. I always bring a whiskey, or I will bring Viking champagne for you guys. I heard yeah, Robert yeah, get yeah, the shaky knees sure. when he drink. Uh, yeah, I look forward to that. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. So let's put the lid on this one then. Cheers. Cheers, everyone, and thank you all for tuning in. All and, right. Um, let's um, see you guys soon. <laughs> Cheers, yep. guys. Bye-bye. Cheers. See you. Bye.